In this tutorial, we're going to learn about several data structures, specifically about what a stack is, what a queue is, and how we can implement them using a singly linked list. A singly linked list is a collection of nodes that together form a linear sequence. Each node is a lightweight object that stores a reference both to an element of the sequence as well as a reference to the next node of the list. The first and last node are referred to as the head and the tail of the list, respectively. The process of moving along the list is known as traversing the linked list, and it's done by starting at the head and following the reference to the next node. We know that we've come to the end of the list when we reach the node that has none as its next reference. A linked list does not have a predetermined fixed size. The space it takes up is proportional to the current number of elements it contains. You may recall from the profiling tutorial, lists themselves, the built-in Python data type, allocate more space than the current number of elements that they actually contain to make the appending process very efficient. When we add elements to the head of the linked list, we do so by creating a new node and having that node reference the current head of the list. In this way, the most recent node added becomes the current head of the list. We can also add an element to the tail of the list, provided that we keep a reference to the tail node. In this case, we create a new node, assign its next reference to none, and then set the next reference of the tail to point to this new node. And then we update the tail reference to this new node. Now that we've got the theory clear in our heads, let's implement a stack structure with a singly linked list. A stack has last in, last out behavior. Objects can be pushed in and then popped out. Objects can be added at any time. But when you want to access an object from the stack, the most recently added object is the first to be removed. Considering contexts where this behavior would be useful, think of any word processor or spreadsheet suite. There's an undo button. As you perform an action, for instance, typing, making something bold and then italicizing it, those actions are added to the stack. Then when you want to undo, the most recent action you've performed is undone first. Let's jump in and start implementing this stack. We'll call it SLL stack, short for singly linked list stack. And within this class definition, we define another class. This is our lightweight node. In the init method, we'll add two parameters, the element, that is the object that we're referencing from that node, and next, this is what we'll be referencing the next node in this singly linked list. Now that we've defined our lightweight node, we can go back to writing the rest of our class. In this init method, we'll initialize the head as none and the size as being zero. We'll overload the len operator so that we can see the size of our stack at any time. We'll define another method, is empty. What this method does, it takes the size, and if the size is equal to zero, then it returns true. If it's not zero, then it returns false. In this way, we can see if our stack is empty or not. Now on to pushing elements into our stack. The way this works is that once we've instantiated our stack, we can call the push method of the instance and we pass in the object that we want to store in our stack. The body of our function will take that element and then instantiate a new node which references that object and the current head of the singly linked list. And then that becomes the new head. After we've done this, we'll increase our size counter by one. In our pop method, what we'll do first is we'll check to see whether our stack is currently empty. And obviously, if the stack is empty, then we can't pop anything from it, so we'll raise an error. We'll take this opportunity to define our own error, and it's as easy as this. We're going to call our error the isEmpty error. And all we need to do next is define this error as a new class, subclassing from exception. In the body of the class, we'll just put a pass statement. When you pass in a string to this argument, as we've done here, we'll see the behavior later, but what happens is that this then becomes 
the extra error message. So if the stack isn't empty, we'll assign the element attribute of the head node to result. Then we can get the reference that that particular head node is pointing to and then self.head. underscore next takes the node that was the next one in the singly linked list and assigns it as the new head of the stack now that we've popped it and then we decrease our size counter by one. The only other method that we'll include in this admittedly very simple implementation is the top method. This is a way of seeing what's at the top of this singly linked list, at the top of this stack, without having to pop it, without having to remove it. So again, we check to see whether the stack is empty or not, and if it has anything in it, then we'll return the element of the current head node. Now it's time to put this to the test. What we'll do is we'll run Python and our script but passing in the lowercase i flag. What this does is it runs your script, it runs your program, and then puts you in the interpreter. So we'll have everything that we've defined available to us. And we can see this by typing in sll stack and seeing that we indeed have our class that we've defined. We'll instantiate it, assigning it to s, and we'll push a string object one into it. Now that we've done that, when we check the length of our instance, we see that it's one. And now that we've put a second item in, we see that the length is two. We can use our top method to see what's at the top of the stack, i.e. at the head of this singly linked list. And now we'll pop. And so if you recall, the node at the very head end will be removed and returned. We pop again, and now we get our string. We can use the same behavior to implement a queue structure. A queue is different from a stack. Whereas a stack is a last in, first out, a queue is a first in, first out structure. So what we'll do is we'll copy over our new exception from before, and we'll start things off how we started off the stack. The node is exactly the same. So to do this in our init method, we'll instantiate both the head and the tail. Overloading the len operator is exactly the same. Furthermore, the isEmpty method is also exactly the same. Instead of pushing and popping, we enqueue and we dequeue from a queue. Enqueuing is similar to pushing, we're adding something into our queue. So that's why we'll take in the element as an argument. The reason for instantiating both the head and the tail is because in order to implement this data structure, we need to perform operations on both ends of the queue. In order to orientate yourselves with this, we're aligning the front of the queue with the head of the list and the back of the queue with the tail of the list. So essentially we enqueue elements at the back and then we dequeue them from the front. We put things in at the bottom and then we take things out at the top. In that way, the first thing that we put in is the first thing that we'll get out. So in the NQ method, the first line there on line 22, the node that we're adding will be the new tail node. Therefore, if you see, the first argument is the element, the object that we're storing, that we're pointing to, but then that node, because it's the tail, it points to none, and that's why none is the second argument there. We'll create this node and assign it to new. We check to see whether the queue is empty or not. And if it is empty, then the node that we've just created becomes the head. If the queue isn't empty, then we add our node onto the bottom, onto the tail of the list. Once we've done this, we can say that our new tail is the new node that we've added, and then we can increase our size counter by one. In terms of taking things out, first of all, we check to see whether our queue is empty. If it is, we raise our own exception, and if it's not, then we can continue onto line 33. We take the element attribute of our head, 
we assign it to result, and then we look at the next thing in our queue, and then that will become the new head as we're getting rid of the current head. We decrease the size counter by one, and if our queue is now empty, then we'll assign none to tail. Then we return the object from line 33. And just to finish things off, just like the top method that we had with the stack, we'll have the first method with the queue in order to take a look at what's first in the queue. Again, we'll put it to the test. We instantiate our queue, see that it's currently empty, it has a length of naught. So we enqueue the string 1, and we'll enqueue the string 2. Then we'll loop over range 5 and add these integers to our queue. So we're adding naught, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The length of our queue is now 7. If you recall, the first thing that we put in was the string 1 and indeed the first method chose that. Now, when we try to remove things from the queue, when we use the DQ method, we see our first in, first out behavior. The first thing we added to our queue was one, and so the first thing that we get out is also one. We continue DQing and see that we get the next element that we added, all the way until our queue is then empty. I hope this tutorial provided some insight into stacks, queues, and the singly linked list. Do consider subscribing to show your support if you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to look out for a complete data structures and algorithms course that we'll be releasing free on this channel in the coming weeks. Until then, take care.